Good afternoon. So I'm here to present the uh, Marine Science Dashboard. And so in marine science, I think the life cycle uh, is the same as in other communities. But just to illustrate uh, how it can look in marine science, uh, let's say we come up with a new method or new instruments. Then we can go in the field and deploy that instrument to make a video uh, survey, let's say, of the deep sea bed or deep sea ecosystems. And from these videos, we select uh, the most important uh, images, and then we use software to extract information, to annotate these images, and that creates our data sets. <coughs> and then we start sharing that, uh, that knowledge. It can take the form of presentations, posters, and eventually publications. And these can be great literature, literature or they can be peer-reviewed uh, publications. And the uh, the goal, I would say, of open air is to verify the, these uh, these objects to increase their fairness. And so, in marine science, at least in the projects I'm involved in, uh, we have several uh, providers of content. Um, we have uh, for literature, obviously, uh, the usual journals. Uh, nowadays, we have uh, data journals coming up that are quite useful, uh, and we, we use it quite, uh, quite a lot. Uh, also, spe uh, specialized journals for modeling or software publications, and then Zenodo, where, which is used uh, to publish pre-publication uh, articles, or also presentations, posters, uh, deliverables in projects. Uh, that is used more and more. Uh, when it comes to data, uh, we have a lot of data repositories. Um, some <coughs> focus on environmental data, some on molecular data, genomics, some on imaging, uh, some are aggregating data uh, for operational oceanography or for fisheries or for biodiversity. Uh, then we use also uh, GitHub and some uh, institutional repositories for model uh, code, but also model outputs. Uh, another example is protocol.io, which we use for, uh, for protocols methods. And then we also use uh, social, uh, social media and ResearchGate to promote and to bring uh, attention to these, uh, these publications. Now, in the for in Open Air Connect for the marine science, we decided to use a three-tier approach to aggregate, to start aggregating these, uh, these contents. Uh, the first one is to look at past projects, so aggregate all the, uh, the content from past projects funded by the EU, but also by national uh, agencies. A second approach is to take a single project, uh, in this case, uh, Horizon 2020 project from Atlas. It's a medium-sized project. It has 25 uh, partners. And so we decided, so Open Air Connect is uh, in the description of work of that project. So it is said that we use Open Air Connect actively from the start of the project to the end of the project to demonstrate how it can help uh, improve the and a third approach is to use uh, a network of institutions in marine science, in this case, Euronarine, uh, which has, it's a bit larger, 60 institutions. And that approach is mainly to bring awareness, to broaden the awareness in the community. Okay, for the first approach, uh, this is a result, uh, it's a survey that was done by the Marine Knowledge Gate, and it surveyed marine science uh, projects, so ten, about 10,000 projects and 12,000 outputs in 2016. Uh, what I want to show with this, so, we have, so in the pie chart, the, the width of the pie, is the number of projects and the extent of the pie is the number of uh, outputs. So if we compare uh, FP7, 
projects, to national uh, funded projects, uh, we see that fewer larger projects tend to bring more outputs compared to uh, lots of national smaller scale projects which tend to bring uh, less output. So that's, uh, and my point is that initially open air was uh, focusing, not even focusing, it was uh, only looking at outputs from FP7. And progressively, it started to look at uh, other uh, projects coming out of uh, national funding and other sources. Uh, so that, you know that figure. So large projects, so few large projects uh, contributing lots of uh, outputs, but now we're looking at lots of small projects with smaller outputs, and that's the, the long tail that we want to, uh, to address with the, the dashboard, uh, to reach out to the community and reach out to these, uh, these smaller projects. So that's the marine science dashboard, the way it looks at the moment. Uh, so 600 and more projects, uh, 12,000 publications, 4,000 something research data sets, uh, software about 4,000, that's a bit inflated uh, because we see there all the, the versions. So for marine science it's more in the, the few hundreds, maybe 500 software, which is already quite good. Um, and I will look at the search functions, I will show you that. Um, if we look at the monitoring uh, functions, it provides at the moment uh, basic statistics uh, about the access mode, uh, about how uh, the timeline of access uh, to data and uh, outputs. Uh, you can look at it split by project as well. And what we would like to work with OpenAir to, to develop is to have a bit more statistics uh, touching well, I mean, who is how, how many are citing the different outputs, uh, who is citing who, uh, doing network of rapid analysis, and having impact factors. That's something that we would like to develop in the, in the future. Um, in the share function, uh, of course, OpenAir is providing uh, instructions and guidelines uh, where to put the data uh, in open access or in closed access and how to bring the, uh, the closed access uh, outputs into open access. So that's something that we use uh, in our science in the projects. And then linking, uh, so there, there are algorithms that bring uh, outputs directly in the community, but we miss, I mean, open air misses some, uh, some outputs. So with the linking function, you can plan the publication of data sets or any of these. Um, and what we would like to work uh, on is interlinking. There are already uh, work done in that direction, but being able to link all the, uh, the outputs in the life cycle of your research paper, let's say, uh, that's something that we would like to see. Okay, and then the second approach with uh, Project Atlas. Uh, so what we did, as I said, it's embedded in the project. So we first brief uh, and train just all the scientists in the project about where to put the data. So we have data repositories, as, uh, journals, how to make it open access or uh, other means. <coughs> and then using Zenodo for all the presentations, the deliverables and the posters, and also uh, making sure that they use ORCID to identify themselves, making sure that they uh, properly acknowledge uh, all the outputs with the, the project, because that's the way, that's the basic way uh, for open air to link, to automatically link uh, an output to a project. So that's the catch-all that I just mentioned, based on that. And then we use the app box, for example, the claim function, so we can claim all these, so the scientists are doing it in Atlas. And also the monitoring functions where uh, 
all the outputs are automatically reported to the EC, so that simplifies our reporting uh, procedure in the project. And we also claim uh, that to display it on our website. So these are benefits that we get from the code here. Um, so in the dashboard for the marine science community, you can also have uh, what each project has its own uh, page. So that's one way to bring attention to the, the outputs of the project. And if we look at some statistics, so this is uh, showing that the top 10 H2020 projects, uh, that's all disciplines confounded uh, from 2014, so it's yeah, only uh, H2020. Uh, so we're quite pleased to see that uh, Atlas is the only marine project uh, that reaches the top 10, uh, which indicates that uh, being, if we use open air in the, in the life of the project, if people are aware of it and using it, then it, it does improve <coughs> the reporting and the, uh, well, making it better with all the outputs. Similarly, if we look at the top 10 of uh, marine science projects, uh, then Atlas is the only H2020 project in the top 10. All the others are from FP6, FP7, they're finished. Uh, they're, you expect that uh, they reach the maximum of outputs, whereas Atlas already uh, in midlife uh, is already part of the top 10. So if we use Open Air Connect, uh, then it works, it, uh, it really improves our visibility and the, the access to our outputs. And finally, uh, Euromarine. Uh, so Euromarine has a mandate uh, to address open science. Up to now, we didn't have much tools to do it. Now we want to use Open Air Connect, and that might be a way to beyond the, the lifetime of the, the project, Open Air Connect. Euromarine could pick up uh, the curation of the uh, marine science dashboard. And yes. So that, that's, a, that's our option for the future, to maintain, to make it sustainable. 